Welcome to Community of Love Christian Fellowship, where God loves you and we do too. Join us in person on Sundays from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. for 60 minutes of dynamic praise, inspiring fellowship, and life-changing worship. Point your GPS to 557 Cambridge Street in the Austin neighborhood of Boston, Massachusetts, 02134. Visit us on the web at colcf.org. That's colcf.org. To learn more about our Friday evening services, our various ministries, and our upcoming special events. Now, let's join the service already in progress. Praise God that this afternoon we can talk about if it had not been for the Lord on my side. And yes, it looks like there's a typo in the bulletin, but there's no typo that's there on purpose. Because this is an interactive sermon today. All you need is a pen for you to activate your interactiveness. Because at some point in the sermon, if there's a moment that reaches you and your heart and your spirit and your soul, I want you to draw in the deep. Because every now and then we have a habit of saying that it had not been for the Lord on my side, but we have to be clear that it was the Lord on our side. So at any point where you feel that the Spirit is moving you, affirming something, or challenging you, or speaking something to you, all I want you to do is take out a pen or a pencil or a marker, whatever you got, highlighter, amen, take some good specs out, whatever you have, amen, and draw in the deep. Because that's affirmation that it was the Lord. Everybody else in the challenge? All right. Our scripture this afternoon is the 124th Division of Psalm. Allow me to read it to you for your hearing. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when people rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. When their anger was kindled against us, then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. But blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Mm -hmm. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowl. The snare is broken. And we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our help. Our help. Without showing your hands and making any kind of sign or you make your ball, but does anybody need any help from the Lord today? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Don't tell on yourself. I'm, I'm just going to volunteer myself as an example. Does anybody need some help? from the Lord today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a word for you. This song, 124 songs, found in a certain segment of the songs that are called the Songs of Ascent. Songs of Ascent from, from Psalm 120 to 134. Songs of Ascent. Other people have called them graduate songs or songs of degrees, songs of steps or pilgrim songs. Why is that relevant? It's relevant because these were the songs that the worshippers sang on their way to the Temple of Jerusalem. If you've ever seen a map of Jerusalem or perhaps even been there, there is a long road that is uphill to get to the temple. And the people of God, as they began to worship on the way, mm, as they worshiped on the way to the temple to lead worship, they would sing some of these songs. And so in Psalm 120 all the way to 134, if you ever find yourself on the way, Somewhere, you need a quick word. The songs of ascent will help you because these are songs that help us to do what's essential for worship reflect. See, David is teaching the people of God in this song don't be so busy being afraid of what's to come, and don't be so busy being anxious of what's going on now. Because if you're able to reflect on where you've been in your life, you too will say, If it had not. For the Lord on my side, tell me, where would I be? In the midst of your struggles, you look around and you're like, man, life is just not fair. It's not going right. Everything I try fails. 
everything I'm invested in just does not have a great return on the investment. It seems like I can't make a good decision. And then you look for, you forecast ahead, and you're like, man, if this is a predictor of what's to come, I'm not even sure I want to go down that path. And so we have fear of the future, anxiety in the present. But David says to the people of God, just pause for a second and look back over your life. And the fact is, you are still here to tell your story. And it may be a murky story. It may be a cloudy story. It may be parts of your story that you just don't even want to mention. There may be stories where you, there may be parts of your story where you may skip over a couple of years and be like, and then this happened, and then, and then this happened, and then, and then this happened. But the fact is that you are still here. And it takes reflecting on the fact that God has been in your life for you to realize that you're still here. And I know for those of us who are deeply entrenched in some situations that are beyond us, that may not be enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we go to the psalmist and David in, 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 in verse 3 talks about then they would have swallowed us up alive. And the image here is that they would have killed you quickly. To get David specific here, and, and, and you know, the Bible is not necessarily for the weak at heart. So David is saying, if you focus on what God has done for you, and you realize that you could have been out of here a long time ago. And I would argue that all of us have stories. They may not be as glamorous as somebody else's story. There may not be that moment when <gasps> everything, you know, you know those stories. You may not have that story, but you have a story to tell about how God has saved you in the twinkle of an eye and pulled you away from harm. Yes. This is what David's saying. There's those moments where you were almost dead. But then he says that in verse 6, blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. The image here is a so painful to be in someone's teeth. So David's saying, not only was God on our side in the most general sense, but there were moments where we could have been out quickly. And there were other moments where we could have been out in a very dragged out, painful situation. But then in verse 7, praise God, he says, we have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken. Those who tried to trap us, those who tried to contain us, those who tried to entrap us, those who tried to set us up. The setup was broken. The trap was broken. The engagement was broken. The prison was broken. And the reality is that we escaped. Oh. Now see, that's a good word for me already. Because I can't tell you how many times it's been one of those moments and I was watching the uh, who was I watching the other day? I think it was uh, uh, Fat Albert and the Cosby kids. I was traveling, that was all that was on. I was trying to go to sleep. It was real late at night, and I was trying to find something. And, and I wasn't necessarily watching Bill Cosby and, and, and Fat Albert. And, you know, my favorite, my favorite part of it was the Brown Horn. Yeah, y'all remember the Brown Horn? I'm aging myself now. The Brown Horn, you And now, my friend, <laughs> we'll have to see what we're going to do. And the brown horn would talk real slow and dragged out. And he would be in the midst of danger. And he'd look to his buddies, right? The little thing was like a tape cassette player, whatnot, and another big brother right there. And, and at the moment of the climax of activity, at the moment where he was about to get tapped out, it would stop. And then Bill Cosby would come back on and say, Well, you have to join us next week to see what happened. Our life is like. There were moments where, right when we were at the cusp of something, God halts the picture and says, don't forget I'm with you. Don't forget, I'm, I'm with you. You don't have to do this by yourself. So, so, so let's pause for a cause and let's breathe for a second and let's play this thing out. And you're like, look, look, I only have two seconds to make a decision. God says, no, I don't know. God said, I can freeze it for a second if you want to hang with me and deal with our conversation. If you're willing to talk with me right now, I'll push pause on time itself. And so in the moment of your stressful situation, we reflect back 
and say, if the Lord had not been on my side, and then you think of those moments where you could have been a quick death or slow death, but then you realize those moments where you were entrapped and captured and imprisoned by those who were against you, and God could stop and said to you, like your grandma might have said, baby, what you gonna do? You gonna follow me? Or you gonna do it your own way? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's a moment. That's a moment where David says this, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. David said in that moment of pause, when God stops the time and asks you the question, don't forget that your help is in the name of the Lord. Call out the name of the Lord and acknowledge that the Lord created both the heavens and the earth. Why is that important? Because it says that the Lord has all power. And when you think that there's no way in the world that you can get out of this scenario, you remember your help is in the name of the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. Is there anything that God can't do? Can't God stop time? If it had not been for the Lord on my side. See, worship without reflection is not allowing you to really, really have the fruits of worship. Work is because in Romans we find us in worship in spirit and in truth. And your truth is your narrative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your truth is your narrative. When you wake up in the morning, you made a choice. Are you going to be you or are you going to be somebody else? Yeah, 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 yeah. And sometimes we choose to be somebody else because we don't want to look ourselves in the mirror and deal with the pain and the trauma and the pressure that we have gone through. Yeah, yeah, all of us do it. All of us do it. I ain't pointing no fingers. I'm, I'm doing this right now. And the question is, are you ready to have the courage to be vulnerable enough to trust God who created the heavens and the earth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a decision. It's a decision. It's not a default. The default is to be somebody else. The default is to be amorphous, right? To be the one who can blend in in any situation, right? Who can work in the room, right? Who can be whoever everybody else wants them to be, amorphous. But the question is, are you going to be the child of God that God created you to be in the space and the time that God has you placed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a decision to make. Yeah. Because when we worship without reflection, and that's why on the way to the temple at Jerusalem, the worshipers, the ones who were going to be leading worship in the temple, had to already get fired up, right? They, they were like the, the football players today. Yeah, yeah, games later on, but I guarantee you, they already in the locker room. Far away, far away, they ain't dead, right? Because the prime time game is later on. But if you don't get fired up right now, right, because you got to bring it to the field, right? Because if you just show up to the field and be like, yo, we're going to have a good game today, right? You got to get fired up early. And so the worshipers were getting fired up on the way to the temple. They were reading the songs and singing the songs and hearing David is leading them. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. And then he said, let Israel say it. And then they repeated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the way to worship. Yeah, this is a, this is a, dynamic shift for us because we're used to coming to worship. We're not used to worshiping on the way to worship. See, see, watch what happens. When you worship on the way to collective worship, you bring the power that the Lord is investing in you to the power of the collective. And then the power of the collective, who is there nothing that we can't when you worship on the way to worship. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that's why I don't, I don't know how people come late. Because what I see is you bringing the power of the Lord into here on top of the power that's already here, and it gets even more powerful. And then when we when we leave at the end of service and we grab our hands, guess what happens? The power that way, power this way, power this way, power that way. And we share. And that's why the people of God are worshiping on the way of worship. Because
your strength. That is doing work. Somebody in here needs healing. And God says that I will do what I need to do. But the question is, are you going to do what you need to do? To partner in that healing. Somebody needs some forgiveness in here. And God says, I'm willing to do what I need to do. But the question is, are you willing to do what you need to do? Somebody needs to come out of being solitary and being lonely. And God says, I'm willing to do what I need to do. But are you? Yeah. 
if you can't get out of bed, you may need to keep a pair of body bed so you can just look at it and say, if it had not been, and then you say that you find your leg, get under the spring, just move to the floor. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, and the other leg go up and you find yourself just sitting on the side of the bed with the mirror holding up. If it had not been, you find yourself stretched up and standing up. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, and you walk into the bathroom and you put the little mirror down and get in the big mirror and really talk to yourself. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Theological degree or be ordained or licensed to preach. This is my favorite part. You get in the mirror, you preach to yourself. Tell me! Yeah, 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 yeah. You can either get your James Brown, tell me! Right? Or you can get your Martin Luther King Jr., tell me! Right? Or you can get whoever you want to bring in. You can get Big Mama, but tell me! Right? Whoever it is, tell me! Yeah. If it hadn't been for Lord, I'm going tell me! Would I be? Where would I be? Some of us have seen some of the stuff in our lives, stuff that we would never wish upon anybody else, but you made it through. Some of us have seen some stuff that only you can talk to yourself about because nobody else in the world would ever believe you or even have the imagination to conceive what you're sharing. But only you. But like the three dudes who I preached about last week, when it's just only you, there's somebody on your wing. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you weren't here last week, you pulled up the, uh, the video from last week because we talked about them three Hebrew brothers, right, who, who got cast into the fire furnace. And they were going to praise God with their total praise no matter what. They were the fire furnace and the thing turned up seven times as hot as any other fire furnace. And then brothers started pop locking, they started windmilling, they started doing the electric slide, they did the chop chop slide, they even made up a fire and furnace slide. But when they were getting in, and they looked over their shoulder, there was a fourth person dancing with them, turning it up with them, going in with them. And they looked back, and that helped them to be encouraged. Because where you are, the Holy Spirit is with you. Where you are, and if you make the decision to do things God's way, then the Holy Spirit will not only stay in back of you, but will jump in front of you and lead the party. Yes, God loves to get down. God loves to have a good time. That's why we talk about cheerful givers. That's why we talk about coming into the temple to praise God and you have an exclamation mark and not a dot, dot, dot. We praise God with our own and our being. And when you think about it that way, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, and you ask folks to tell you, where would you be? Oh, I got stories for days. I got stories for days. I'm not even going to bore you with my stories. Why? Because you have your own stories. And the more we get comfortable telling our stories, you know what people pray about? Congregations and congregational growth and church growth. You know when the church grows? When, when the church begins to tell their story. That's it. There, there, there's nothing I can do with that. I, I'm not responsible for that. I, I'm responsible for making sure that every person that walks in here feels nurtured, feels cared about, that, that feels the presence of the Lord. I, I'm responsible for making sure that I'm a vessel used by God to make sure that we move on a little bit higher. But, but the church grows when you share your story. That's what I love about it. That's what I love about it, right? Because the power is that the church doesn't have to grow too fast. And it doesn't have to grow too slow. Because we're not on the talk. The challenge is we got to do the work ourselves. And then when we're ready to share the story, we'll share the story. You, you, you know what I mean? And so that's why I don't get bothered with it. But some of you are here because I, I know that we're praying for you and you're praying for us. We don't do perfect attention for us around here. We don't need to. Right? Because sometimes we don't show up for God. Yeah, yeah. And that's we. That's, that's all of us. Right? So how can some of we who don't show up for God castigate and ostracize the rest of we who don't show up for God? We can't do that. That's hypocritical. So we commit to prayer for everyone, every time. And the more you share your story, the more power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
from henceforth and forevermore. And God says that if you meet me 